All right. Uh, we were in the same class and graduated in 1950. From Wauwai. Yeah. And we were in the same homeroom our junior year, year and went to the junior prom together. In those days, the prom was held in the auditorium that we decorated. We always decorated it up real pretty. And we had a real band. After we left, we went out some nice place to eat in Pittsburgh or over that way. My girlfriend and I were class officers and ushers this, for all the games. This is them two right here. It's Mary Ann and Liz Nestor, because mm -hmm. she has passed away not too long ago. Yeah, my best friend. Uh, and Al and Russ sold and played baseball. Wish I had no sports for girls during our time there. We had spring plays every year. It was a big thing. And here's some of the little things that we had, the names of them and the cast and, and all that. So um, we had a director that would come in with a musical play with pretty costumes and our music teacher, and he worked together with our band director. They picked the parts for the kids, a lot from the uh, music classes, to sing, dance, and act. We performed for the school kids one afternoon and other people for two evenings. It was a lot of fun. The school had a great band those years, led by uh, Mr. Harding. I don't know if you heard of him or not, but he had uh, bands would go and uh, participate he in. He was uh, the band leader for yeah. a lot of years. Mm -hmm. We had no cafeteria, no lunch room, no buses, so we had to walk home for lunch. We would walk to school, walk home for lunch, go back to school, come home at night. A year after graduation, Alan and I got engaged, and the following year we were married. Seven months after we were married, right before Christmas, Alan was drafted in the Army. And he was gone for two years and sent to Korea. And there were no phones, you couldn't talk to each other, no computers, couldn't get online or go see them on the computers or anything. So that was a long time. They called you one time? Yeah, one time when he got had R&R, &R, he went to uh, Japan, Japan. but I, I don't know what you want to interview us on. Um, things along those lines, that was all perfect. Those are all answered questions I have. Oh, okay. Paul E. Harding, he actually is, it looks like he wrote some of the music that we play now, like mm -hmm. the alma mater and oh, stuff like did. that. He was, yes. our band was great. It used to go to, for competitions mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah, was it like very large when you went? Yes. It was a nice large band. That's wonderful. I don't know what is it now, just a smaller band. Isn't um, it? it's a we have about sixty kids, so it's not huge by any means, but it's Are it's you still in the good. Band? Yes, ma'am. Oh, what do you play? Trombone. Oh, that's tough. <laughs> yeah. I have very short arms, so it's oh. sometimes a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> and then the larger boys in my section just do oh, it with yeah. ease. Sure. Always jealous. <laughs> Wow, that's nice. Now you can take any of those and make copies of them if you want. I mean, you want can to. borrow them and then give them back to Jeffrey if you want to for your if you have to make a presentation. And this was our newspaper. Uh, do they still have the little president newspaper? No, ma'am. Oh, they don't. You gotta make a copy of that. Oh, too. they had a real nice they newspaper. That guys, is really you nice. Guys, mm -hmm. You guys could put something like that together. They put it together. And, um, and the observer reporter would help you, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know if they would help or not. Mm-hmm. They would. They're good people. Were you two involved in the plays at all? or? Yeah, I was always in the play. Because I, I took course, you mm -hmm. know, and um, so a lot of them that wanted to would sign up, and then you would get a part. Yeah, I have circled in there so you could see which ones I was in. Okay. So, and then uh, we had, on the back, there's some of them autographed. Um, so, how does it feel knowing that the Wash High, that Wash High continues in your family? Good. Good. I like it. I mean, uh, we always teased about Trinity. Boo, Trinity. I feel the same way. <laughs> but now, I don't know, it's not, there's not much, as much competition. There was with the football games and the basketball games. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of competition then uh, with it. But I didn't know now. Then I had grandchildren to go there. 
that went there. Well, the They're graduated now. The problem now is when we were at Wash High, there were 1,500 kids. Mm -hmm. Now there's like six or 700. Uh, Ken and Mac, we got grandchildren to go down there. They got like 1,800 kids now. And I think Trinity probably is somewhere around 15, 1,600. So, you know, the... Yeah, our school was big. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's changed a lot. But, hey, uh, Ford, we're concerned it's still Wash High, right? Oh, yeah, practice. Little practice. Mm -hmm. How exactly did you two meet out of that huge student body? He sat behind me in the home room in 11th grade. We were in Mrs. Hoagland's room in 405, mm -hmm. fourth floor, 405. You ever see that number up there? That's where we met. And he called, and this is how, to get to me, he called his friend who went with my friend. And my friend was to ask me, if he asked me to the prom, would I go? <laughs> That's a long way around. How was political even that? <laughs> so he was real shy. So I said, yes, I'd go. So we went to the prom. Then after that, he asked me if I to go to the, Before we went to the prom, he asked me to go to the movie. And uh, then he and his friend, uh, we got together, the four of us. And... Then after that, we just uh, dated and stuff and went together. The rest of uh, it was only a month left in our junior year, and then our senior mm -hmm. year, we went together. That's right. And then uh, the following year, we got together, we got engaged, and then a year after that, we got married. She was one, she was the only child in her family. I had, there were eight in our family. I had one, one sister and seven brothers, and my sister graduated in 41. My older brother, is, they both passed away. My older brother graduated in 46, and the next brother graduated in 48, and then we graduated in 50. Mm -hmm. And then I had twin brothers, uh, Fred and Frank. Uh, Frank was the uh, class president, and they graduated like four years later. And then David, grad David, uh, Graduated in 1959. In fact, I called him the other day and uh, I said, how's it, how's it feel to be 75? He said, yeah. <laughs> And Jimmy was uh, like, he was the last the one of the family. Yeah. And he's uh, like 70 uh, now, I think. Yeah. And he was a school teacher at, uh, at Trinity. So everybody just kept on moving on, but all my whole family and, and of course her, we all went to Washington. Yeah. Because we all, at that, at that town, the city right now has like 16,000 people. And at that time we had 30,000. And you couldn't, when city. you went uptown on Friday, Saturday, oh, you crowded. could walk on the sidewalk mm -hmm. and there's so many people. And yeah. uh, we A lot had, of stores we had that town. We had four theaters with uh, Basil, which is still there, the State Theater, the Washington Theater, and the Court Theater. And they were all within a half a block of downtown. So there were there was plenty of entertainment, and it's it's just a lot different now. It's uh, you hate to see it this way. I when I go up there and I see the corner of North Main and Chestnut, it's horrible. Those buildings. But what are you gonna do? He was on city council for two for two terms. And but he couldn't get a lot of things done. They did it the first time he was on. They did. They well, did back that. in '75. Yeah, and then the second time he was on, it was like he'd vote for something, and the other ones would vote for something else. So they they couldn't get as much done. Then. But we always work um, the polls for someone that we believe in. We go still go out and work. But the polls in fact, we just worked the polls for Brenda Davis, and she lost. Yeah. We liked her, and uh, I liked her. I thought she was very competitive and uh, was doing a good job, but she had a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of mouth out there going, you know, because we heard some of it up at the polls. We work up here, here at the park at the polls. And uh, it's uh, a lot of my friends down at City Hall. I still had people that uh, worked for me when I was down there in 2000. My last term was 2000, 2004. And I told her I was going to run again. She said, you run again, I'll kill you. <laughs> Jeff, you wanted me to put this on the tape. He said, you'd know what that was. 
<laughs> he said, put the wooden spoon on the table. Yeah, that was <laughs> I'd go after them when they were little. I'd go after them. They'd go under the bed. My twins and me, they'd go under the bed and I'd... Okay. Oh, you got me in the eye. Oh, my gosh, you got me in the eye. And I'd say, oh, my gosh, did I get anybody in the eye? Well, you shouldn't have gone under the bed. You know, you shouldn't have run from me. That's your fault. And, they, and I didn't get them in the eye, but they were putting on that I did. <laughs> well, we've been here, uh, we've been here 50 years, this house. Uh, and we moved here when nobody else was up here. This was all just, woods. This was all woods up here. And uh, Jeffrey, when we moved over here, he was seven years old. And uh, they they were, at that time, they were going to 8th Ward. He went to 8th Ward. He and his yeah, sisters. They went to 8th Ward. Because we lived West in End. West End at that time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then they transferred to 5th yeah. Ward down here on, on Maiden Street. But uh, well, Deborah and Denise were, what, two years older than Jeffrey? Mm-hmm. So he was seven, they were like nine years old when we moved here. Yeah. Our daughters are going to be, uh, next month, they're going to be 16 60 years, years old. old. It's hard to believe. So it's time flies. Yeah, and then we have another son, too. He came along later. He lives down in Kensburg. Where do you live? I live over on Wilmont. Wilmont. It's over by Faith Christian School. I know Christian where that School. is. Uh -huh. Yeah. I know where Vermont is. It's a nice area. Yeah, I really like it over there. So it's a U.S. Okay. Um, for elementary school, was that when the ward schools were still a thing, or mm -hmm. did you? Yeah, I went to Eighth Ward. Okay. He went down to Clark. We had uh, we had five. There was uh, first ward, third ward. 5th Ward, 6th Ward, 7th Ward, 8th Ward, and Clark School. So we had five. And that was nice because they were right in the Maybe area where right. you lived, basically. And like Marion said, there were no school buses. We walked back and forth four times. And, of course, when I played sports, I used to go walk after school was over all the way up to the, the baseball field up on the hill up there where the football field is. And, uh, but it was... Uh, it was different, and I, I don't know, I, you know, we ride by the middle school right up the street here, and uh, a lot of money was spent up there, and and I still look back, your fifth ward is still here, six wards there, eight wards there, our school's still down there on the abandoned building, still beautiful, and I, I just, uh, if I would have been on city council at that time and had voted, I would have voted for middle school. I think uh, kids have all got to be bussed up there, and uh, it just, uh, well, we used to fight with the kids at 8th Ward. We didn't like kids at 8th Ward. Uh, jealous. <laughs> <laughs> jealous. Uh, we had, uh, we had, uh, until we got, well, well, then, of course, we all went to high school together yeah. sooner or later, but uh I like the uh, I like the middle schools. The, the, you mean the grade schools? Uh, the grade, grade schools. schools yeah. uh, we went to seventh grade and eighth grade. We went down to Wash High. Oh, okay. And I played baseball with uh, in the summertime at the Legion with the guys from uh, East Washington, because at that time East Washington was a was a school in itself, and uh, uh, I played ball with those guys a lot during the summertime. But uh, it's. Uh, I think it's different. I, you know, it, it is what they say. It is what it is. Kids kept asking us questions, and I gave them the same answers all the time. And then finally, we went to Amish country, and I got that sign. So now instead of answering their question, I just point to the sign. Yeah. Mr. Right, Mr. Bunner has a similar sign in his room, and he points to it. Well, that's, that's where he got it. Someday that sign is going to be his. One yeah. day, all of this will be yours. <laughs> show, show her when you were in Korea, honey. He, uh, uh, Jeffrey's been a good, a good person and a good teacher. He listened. He was he in business for a lot of years. Yeah, he, he traveled did, a lot. He traveled all over Europe and everything. And then one day he told me uh, he wanted to be a teacher. He so, always did. Yeah. When he was in college, he wanted to be a teacher. But there was no need for teachers at all. That's my service thing. This is the uh, uh, 
unit that I was with in Korea, and that was the Oklahoma National Guard. And uh, when the war was over, they brought them home because they were National Guard, and I got transferred to the 7th Division. But that's my... Uh, Matthew, our youngest son. Yeah, my other son put that in. That's my little weapon that I used. He was on. And that's me sitting on a tank. I went from private to sergeant in uh, about a year. So there was a lot of activity at that time. He's only 20 years old when he went over, or 21. Where around in Korea were you? Well, we landed in Pusan, and I uh, was uh, went by Seoul. When the war was over, I was in North Korea. And in the wintertime, it was 40, like 40 below zero. And uh, uh, North Korea is mountainous, real mountainous. Southern Korea is, is real flat. In the summertime, the winter was like 40 below uh, and uh, cold. In the summertime, it got uh, 125. It was hot as it was cold. But in the wintertime, we had to wear what they called Mickey Mouse boots. They were rubber boots. And when we ran a lot and our feet would sweat, you had to take your boots off, put dry socks on, put the socks on your chest to dry out so your feet wouldn't fall off. I listened. I did what I was told. And I, I made my guys later do what I told them to do. But some guys never listened. You know, and as a result, they lost their toes, toes and trees. But it's uh, it's something yeah, you know, it's like anything else. You know, do what you're told or you. Okay, thank you. Do what you told you, pay the price. What was it like having him go over to Korea? Well, we had just been married seven months, and we just put up a little Christmas tree. We only had a few rooms, and we put our tree up and everything a little early, and then he got the notice to go. Of course, I cried and everything. I said, at least it could have waited until after Christmas. But um, I went down to see him. I rode the bus at Christmas time. Rode the bus down. That was a Fort Campbell. 24 hours. Training. It took 24 hours on Christmas Eve. Everybody on the bus was singing Christmas carols and looking at the houses with all lit up. And uh, we stayed, he couldn't find a room for us because oh, so many people were coming down, so we ended up staying with his sergeant and his family, but they were real nice to us. First sergeant, and they had a little boy, and, and uh, the dad dressed him up like a little soldier. Oh, uh -huh. he listened to his dad, outside, everything yeah. the dad would say, he'd say, yes sir, yes sir, no sir. I don't know if that was so good, but <laughs> it was cute. And. Uh, then, I see, I went down another time when they had an open house. It was all within a month or so because then he went over to Korea. And uh, he was gone for almost two years. And uh, wrote letters every day to him. And he wrote letters every day back, but I didn't always get them. Sometimes I wouldn't get any, and I'd worry, you know, and then I'd get a bunch at one time. So, a lot of my buddies I play golf with now, uh, in fact, some of them are on a cruise right now, and they always talk to me about going on a cruise. I said, I had my 20,000 mile cruise. I said, I don't want to go on any more cruises. Instead, of, the last thing I'd seen in San Francisco was the Golden Gate Bridge. We went right out of That was the last thing I'd seen on the way over. And instead of going south to Hawaii and up to Japan, they went north to the Aleutian Islands. And we ran into a typhoon. We had 5,000 guys on that boat. And the boat just went up like that and down like that. And uh, the message was, eat saltine crackers and you will, will feel okay, basically, in your stomach. Yeah. And, stuff. and yeah. I did, and I, I felt sort of woozy. The guys were throwing up all over the place, a little lousy, you know. You said, stand up and eat breakfast, somebody throw up in your plate. So when the, when the storm finally got over, all they did was they took fire hoses and they fire hose everything, washed everything off, you know, out in the ocean. Because we've seen a, we've seen an ocean with nothing around you for probably 10, 12 days, uh, and it's nothing but water. We go uh, to the beach. I just go like up to here. <laughs> I'm not a water person, but I love walking along the beach. But we landed in Japan, and then we went over to Korea on a flatboat. 
And then when we got to Korea, uh, we landed in Pusan, and uh, the country was a mess, you know, because the North Koreans had come all the way down, pushed all the South Koreans to Pusan. And then that, that's when Truman got us involved in the war, and then we worked our way back up. And uh, uh, Marion just bought me some uh, movies on the Korean thing. I don't know who took the pictures, but they were real, real realistic. They were and like documentaries, but... Sure. Back, back memories, some good memories, some bad memories. What is your most uh, memorable experience from the war? Uh, when I was over, uh, the night, the night it was over at midnight. He said him now. One of, one of my friends, real, his friends, got killed that night. And then, uh, excuse me, and then uh, the thing we had to do, we had to march back 10 miles, and the Chinese had to mar march back 10 miles. And that's what we call the DMZ, uh, the uh, Dry Drive Zone. And nobody was in those, uh, was in that area. Then that's when Eisenhower uh, negotiated with the Chinese to, to end the war. And we were there, no, I don't know, probably three or four months. And uh, of course everybody was sort of touchy, you know, because we lived in a pup tent, which one guy had one part of the tent and you had the other part. And when it rained, if you touched it, it leaked and it was cold. And uh, it was different, you know. Well, I had a, one of our classmates was in the Marines, and after they called the truce, that last day he got killed. I got, I got a phone call at work, and someone said, did you know Bobby Blake? He got killed. And, uh, and of course, I worried even more. I said, gee, just because they called the truce, I said, some of them didn't know it. Some of the Koreans didn't know it, some of the Chinese. And so I said, they could still be shooting, and they did. And uh, there were still people that got it after they called the truce. While I was in the, while I was in the service and overseas, Mary Ann started working at Fairmont Supply Company down there in Jefferson Avenue in 1950. When mm -hmm. she got right out of after high school. And then when I come out uh, in 54, I hadn't gone to college. So then, as a result of being in the military, I got my uh, college paid for. I went to Penn Commercial, got a business degree. And then they hired me down at Fairmont Supply. And that's where I worked for 33 years. Mm -hmm. He so. came in, and I got pregnant, and I had to leave. Back then, if you showed, <coughs> you had to leave. Mm. Can you imagine doing that now? No, not at all. There's one of my uh, certificates for my uh, schooling. What was it like coming back? Um, because I know I talked to a Vietnam veteran and he talked about how the public just did not support the troops at all and they were very awful to them. and. And I don't know if it was like that at all for Korean vets. Well, they call the Korean War the Forgotten War. They still call it that. And it lasted three years. But you and you got good receptions. The Korean yeah. people who went to Korea got good reception. Yeah. When they came back. Because it was, uh, World War Two was over in 45, and that started in 50. So it's like five years later. Guys in Vietnam, they did yeah. take a beating. Their, their catastrophe over there started in 65. And if I remember, it lasted 10 years to 75. Those guys took a beating from not only bad people over there, but uh, from the people around home. But uh, I'm going to show you an older picture. This was taken, do you know where the Millcraft Center building is in Washington? Uh, I can't say that I can place right, it. Right we only have a couple tall buildings, and that's one of them. That's, when they dug That's the what I was, I was on city council. We broke ground for the building. 
and uh, these other guys were, one of those guys were a sports announcer and one of them was Jack Pye Edwards built the building. And he wrote me the little letter when, when he sent that to me. The building's there now and it's still, still alive. And uh, the one thing we did do on city council when I was there the first term was we did rebuild the, the downtown and uh, made it nice and had good cooperation. And uh, Michael Johns at that time was the mayor and uh, he was uh, very innovative and uh, smart, intelligent. It made it a little bit easier, you know. And uh, there's something you can keep if you want. Okay. That's, and believe it or not, your teacher had hair. <laughs> Would that's, you look at that? <laughs> that's his son, uh, <laughs> Jacob and Michelle. She just graduated uh, from uh, being, law, school. Become a law school. And that's his daughter, Tricia. Those are his two daughters, and that's his son. But at that, I just want to show you. He and our other son, uh, Matthew, both get shaving their head and shine their head and get their little hair on their chin, you know. That's the thing, you know. I told them that's what I was going to do. And they said, yeah, you're going to do that, are you? <laughs> but that seems, seems to be a fad. But I thought maybe you could take that to school. No, take, oh, take that okay. to school and uh, show him that you graduate so he don't flunk you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he has a good sense of humor. I think I could show it to yeah. him sooner. <laughs> he has a sense of humor. What are the the biggest changes you've seen in the city throughout your lifetime? Was in uh, in '75 when I was on uh, city council first time. We at that time we rehabbed the whole downtown, widened the streets, put in new sidewalks, and yes. did a lot of things. And then the last time I was there on 2000 for four years, uh, uh, Virginia Olm and I were the two that. I thought were pretty constructive, and they had some good people in the city, but the other three people on the council always had a tendency to boot us down, and uh, so we didn't get that. I would have rehabbed that old town, and right now, based on working with the mayor, I'm trying to trying to work with with Brenda. I don't know what's going to happen now, but we wanted to start to drill up at the park because out of that. And drilling up there in the city, you got a, a 230 acres. The city could probably take in five to fifteen million dollars a year, which would take care of rehabbing the whole downtown and wouldn't wouldn't bother the swimming pool or the ball fields or anything else. It'd be back up in the woods, you know. They know how to do it. And I told the mayor that I would serve on a committee free of charge and um, help put that drilling thing together. So. Uh, I don't think I'm going to give up on it because uh, I, I think if I if I can get it started, it would be good for the city, and we can rebuild the city back up and build Warch High back up to 1,500 kids. <laughs> I mean, it can be done, but somebody's got to, got, got to be involved, you know. So. Now I look at it a different way. I I look at it. The biggest change is there's no movie theaters now. Right. There's no skating rink for the kids. In the city. There's one out here someplace. Pancake. But nothing for the kids uptown there. We used to have a lot of nice stores. They're gone. That malls took care of those. And um, it's just uh, a lot different than when I was a kid or when I was growing up. Or even when my kids, they remember it being different. But uh, a lot of that is gone now. So. But you could have a mini uh, Walmart. You know, mm -hmm. you, you could, there's things you could do if you use your imagination, and, and you could reestablish the town and have stores up there and shops and stuff. Uh, can be done, but it has to be done with people like Jack Payette, the guy that uh, helped us when, when I was in there the first time, because he was a promoter. And the last time he wanted to help the city, they wouldn't work with him, so he went to Pittsburgh and rebuilt that. South, old, uh, uh, South Point. Yeah, at South Point he rebuilt that, he mm -hmm. started that, and then he rebuilt the downtown Pittsburgh area too. And we could have done that up here in Washington, but the people were just, you know, 
it, uh, you, you wonder sometimes how people think, mm -hmm. you know, what they think about, you know. But uh, he was uh, he was a good man, still a good man. He's, he got his son, Lucas, involved now, and uh, he wants to help. But, you know, you got to have people uh, in government that wants to do the right thing and listen, you know. They don't know it all. Get the people that do know it all and they'll get it done. But uh, same old story, you know, you guys have the same problem in school, I know. Yeah, things are political. Too political. Yeah, people are too afraid of change. Mm -hmm. That too. Yeah. It takes good change to make good change. Mm -hmm. Are we answering like new questions or? Yeah, these are perfect. Okay. Um, when you were in school, I know now we have smart boards and we're on laptops all the time, and it's just we a have, little bit too much technology. We had nothing. <laughs> no technology yeah. like that. Yeah, we didn't have those things. Any type of um. Uh, typewriters, or was it just all books? And typewriters. Typewriters. I, I, in fact, you had a typewriting class, right? Yeah. Um, after a certain grade, like, I took first year algebra, and then I went into the secretarial. I don't know if they still have that or not. No, oh, ma'am. They shorthand, typing, um, business English, uh, bookkeeping, those classes. Yeah, they don't have that at all now. So that you're prepared like a job. That's why when I went out and got my first job, I was still in school. I went out towards the end of graduation and went out and I got the job. I taught girls how to dress and everything when they went on an interview, too. And a lot of people that graduated went to Bell Telephone, where that's where I should have gone. They paid a little better than Fairmont's Park. <laughs> Tell her what you made at that time. The, when I first started, I made $88 a month, a month. And when I left, I was making like 142 or 147, something like that a month. No, maybe, yeah, about 147. When he started down there, he made $200 a month. It was in 1955. Of course, yeah. I, would, I, would, I, I just got out of business school and I, I was just starting right. and learning. And then I eventually became the uh, manager, market, marketing yeah. manager mm -hmm. and sales, all the salesmen. Did a lot of traveling. I, I just uh, traveled all over the country. We bought other supply companies and stuff. Fairmont did well then. They're not doing so well now. Yeah. The, the coal mines are they're, they're very hard they're on trouble. the coal. They're in a lot of trouble now. That's what they uh, Fairmont did was sell to the coal mines. So... I had a question oh, in my head. Technology. I started. To say they did. They had no, no phones. Uh, actually, they had no TV. Just TVs were just coming out. And the schools just had, uh, like I said, typewriters. They had no other technology down there. In fact, when our youngest son, um, he was the president of the school. He was very intelligent. And um, the computer, they didn't. They were just starting with the computer, and they kind of showed him a little bit and put him in a room and let him learn himself, mm -hmm. teach himself. So when he went on to uh, college, and they had kids there from New York, Philadelphia, who had been working on computers and everything, which I didn't have. So at first he started out. Well, he taught himself. Yeah, he learned yeah. from those kids. Yeah, he became an engineer. He had his good job. He went to Lehigh and uh, uh, put in his four years, and then he finished his master's up there. And they used him and paid him $1,500 a month. That's to great. To get his master's. Yeah. Training in uh, Lehigh. And then uh, within two weeks after he graduated with he his master's, job. he had a job. And that's the company he's with in Pittsburgh now. They build all the bridges. And the roads, and he works for the federal and state government and everybody. It's good, got a good job, good company, you know. Yeah, there'll always be bridges that need repaired or built. So that's what he does. He lost his wife. Uh, it'll be two years in July. And he has us. Uh, he had, when she died, 
uh, Haley was 15 and his son was 12. And they're 17 now and, and 14. They both go to Canamac. Haley will be the senior down uh, Canamac next year. Mm -hmm. Matt or uh, Cameron will be one uh, sophomore. No, a uh, freshman. Yeah. He's a uh, he's a good hockey player. He loves golf. And Haley's uh, she's on the Tennis. National Honor Society. She does well. But you know the family all seems to pay attention, and uh, they do what Grandma tells them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> really we, we got we got six great grandchildren and nine grandchildren. And nine grandchildren. And most of them live all in, around town, so we see them all the time. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. You come from a big family? Uh, no, not at all. Very small. See, I was an only child, so. but I had a lot of aunts and uncles. Mm hmm We're Italian, so. We lived close to the Italians, you know, we're always together. My aunts and uncles were, they're all gone now. We've been married 63 years, mm -hmm. and uh, I've known you for 66 years. And you know, when we were young, most people didn't live past 65. It's, it's amazing, people are living 100 and some now. And, yeah, it's uh, crazy. 16 years, uh, her and I are gonna be 100. Oh, she's <laughs> <laughs> And Jeffrey will be, uh, well, he'll be 70. Yeah. No. The time goes, the, old, the older you get, the faster time goes. I don't know, it just, just flies by. What was the really, really big thing to do on Friday and Saturday nights when you were in high school? Uh... They had Y teens then, and we went to dances down at the Y. Y W. Y W. They mm -hmm. had they had little groups, bands, playing. It wasn't uh, records or anything. It's and still a beautiful building, and they're going to triple. Uh, T R I P I L took that over. They're going to rehab it, but that's a beautiful building. The YMCA, and yeah. We used to be packed down there on Friday and Saturday yeah. night with the kids dancing. And a lot of kids went to skating, but I went to the dances. And they used to have where they picked Y team sweethearts. So I have a picture that I was picked one year, ninth grade. And it was different people from different schools would be sweethearts. And uh, so that's what I, I like to do. And, uh, Movies. When you dated somebody, usually you went to the movies. And we still go to the movies. We go every Friday night if there's... Some unless reason. there's something that we just don't like to see at all. We still go to the movies on Friday night. Or Friday afternoon now. Mm -hmm. Like 4 o'clock or something. Avoid the riffraff. Yeah, yeah. We, go, we go to 4 o'clock. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't like to be at the movies on late Friday nights or anything like that. All the kids are yeah. like yeah. really yeah. trashy yeah. and yeah. scary. Yeah. We go mostly like four o'clock usually. Um, this is something that we were talking about. I was talking about with my son-in-law. I, when I was young, did not know that the black people had to sit in the movie, had to sit in the back, on the left hand side, or up in the balcony. I didn't know that. I didn't realize that. Because we had friends, I had black friends in, in grade school and in high school and everything. I didn't know that. I didn't know they weren't allowed to use the swimming pool. I just didn't realize it. And then, it, of course, when I, uh, found out, I, I just didn't realize it. Did you know that? Hmm. Not, not back then. Hmm. I told Marianne I, I spent a time in the Army with uh, black guys. Uh, and uh, we never had a problem. Mm -hmm. Everybody took care of everybody. It wasn't like any protests. No, it was a different world. Mm -hmm. But, of course, I didn't know all that stuff went on. People look for trouble, find trouble. You know, it's there. 
you want to make trouble with or something. But uh, you got to be a little taller and uh, have a little love and a little religion in your life. Makes I think it makes a difference, you know. And Jeffrey, I think he's uh, he's a good example of that he he him and his wife uh, Renee are teaching uh, uh, Bible school for our, our young kids at the church now. And they do a good job. They go prepared, and Renee, of course, is always cooking up little goodies for the kids, you know. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> keep, keep, gets her attention, and she does a good job too. But uh, and and the rest of our kids are, you know, it, it's what you do and what you raise as as they see, you know, growing up in stages. It's it's important. How do you see? Um... How have you seen families change throughout the years, too, from when you were young to now, how families are? Well, you have, you have a lot of families. Uh, sometimes they say 70% of the families are without a father. And uh, I think it, it makes a big difference. I, I think kids learn from the togetherness of the family. And I know our kids, have. Uh, I think, have benefited from that. But... Uh, some kids I feel sorry for, young kids without a father or mother or, or you know. Drugs. They weren't. You have a lot of drugs, drugs and stuff. Like just, there is now. And that makes it hard when a family member and a parent on drugs and then a lot of times the kids get on drugs. So that's the, the big difference in families, I think. Well, like Marianne said, when I was a youngster in high school and stuff, I was bashful. I come back from the army. I wasn't bashful. To learn a lesson, and I, I think, uh, I think kids would be well instructed if they came out of high school and spent a year in the military and learned some discipline and, and some appreciation of, of certain things. You know. Absolutely. And uh, it just, I, you know, I just, uh, I learned a lot. But you know, it's. Uh, it's, it's up to the individual, too, and I, I think a lot goes back to the parents. It's still up to the parents. You know, they have the kids. They, they should uh, spend adequate time with them talking about the right things. And when we get together every Christmas, not Christmas Eve, we have about 20, 21 of us. Then we get all the grandchildren and everybody together, and the kids all look forward to it. You know, and I know what they're wondering about, what's going to happen when Mary and I are around. But uh, one of them's going to pick it up and hopefully carry it on, you know. Do you think, Mom? I think they will. I don't know. I, mean, I think somebody, I think one of our girls will, probably. But they all let us know that they, for right, if I was a little nervous, to say they look forward to it, you know. She's my chief financial officer. She's written over 12,000 checks and she handles all that. Yeah, I don't do them online. I have to write out the checks. See, I don't trust that online stuff. I think there's too much things online. I do too. I feel like that's so insecure, the whole thing online. I don't want to give them a lot of information, you know? Yeah. And there's all those hackers. I just feel like it's so much safer to do certain things online. It's, uh, yeah. I feel, we feel the same way. And I, just, I don't know whether that's wrong to feel that way or not, but you just feel like it's a little more positive, mm -hmm. you know, if you've got it here. And taking, she does a tremendous job with it. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> um, boss. I guess I just have one more question. Um, did we answer your other questions? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, unless there was anything else that you had on your mind that you wanted to share. I don't think so. I'll tell you one thing. We've always done, and I want to take you downstairs and show you a no. picture. No. <laughs> I'm taking her downstairs. We got a picture down there where we always... Not always, but we went to Myrtle Beach a lot with the kids when they were growing up. And we got a picture where we're all looking out on the ocean from the back, and then we're all looking towards each other in the front. Great family picture. Mm, it's a nice family picture. But I wanted to show her a couple of my things I got on the wall down in my office. Alan. No. 
downstairs. See, we can put things on the pool table downstairs. Yeah, you know, we have a pool yeah. table that the kids play with Marie on. And he uses it now, like, to lay things on. No, I stored all my stuff, my veteran stuff and this and that. He has fouls on everything, and he has it on the pool table. Can I just t give her five minutes or two minutes down there and show her? No, all right. I, <laughs> yeah, yes, I want to show her my favorite sign. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You come down to me. He's cluttery. I am the same exact way. It's you fun. are? Yeah, very I, cluttery. I like things in order. So, the downstairs is his thing. I do too, but, but what I did learn in the Army is you put things in their place. Yeah. You line them up. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's what I like. Uh -huh. Not line them up all over the table. Yeah. But if you, if you don't mind, you can go down. Oh, I don't mind at all. Okay. So I guess just one last question. Okay. Um, what would you say, how do I word this? Um, uh, what is your favorite thing about being a Prexy? That's my last question. I just have always been proud to go to Wash High. When I was there, it was a, the, uh, the, uh, how was it? The teachers might not have been as friendly, but um, and I don't even know that they were really better teachers. They probably weren't even better teachers. Well, Mrs. Hugland was our and 405 was our homeroom teacher, Marianne and mine. Mm -hmm. And when when she found out that we we sort of liked each other, when we went down for an assembly, she would snap her remember, fingers because yeah. we were sitting together, and that meant we had to move. <laughs> We'd move, and she'd sit between us. <laughs> she was like, I don't know if she was ever married. No, she, she wasn't. But she was she was nice, but she was different. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, Mr. McLumphy, he was uh, he was uh, our teacher down. I forget what he thought. He was your teacher, not mine taught math or something and he was our baseball coach and when I was out there pitching I look at him you know and he used to go like this which meant he wanted me to throw a curve well then I'd throw it straight and when I come in he says I told you to throw a curve I said I didn't feel like throwing a curve I bet you said and, that <laughs> he didn't say that I'm sure <laughs> no he was a boss but we had uh, it's just, uh, there were so many kids there then. Well, t uh, and, uh, tell, tell Megan what we do now. Every every quarter. Oh. On the well, first of all, we have reunions every five years. We've been to every reunion, and we always get a nice crowd. Kids don't have reunions that much now. I guess because most of them, I mean, go to college. Mm -hmm. it, no, I mean... Uh, oh. I'm talking about the kids now. Uh, a lot of them will say, yeah, they're going to have a get-together, uh, and they'll have it, and maybe they won't have it for a long, long time again. And it might be because they go to college and they're more interested in getting together with college kids. I don't know. But um, we went to every, up until this year, we went to every class reunion. I, I'm a class officer, was a class officer. But we went to every class reunion, and we enjoyed seeing kids that came in out from too. out of state, yeah. and had a good time. And now, starting now, a lot of them are passed away or sick and stuff. So we just get the ones from town, and we'll every quarter. Every quarter on the first Thursday. Yeah, and they're changing it to every other month now. Yeah. We have about 22 that gets together out at the tower for breakfast. Nine o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. We do those things. Mm -hmm. But the kids uh, now, I think they get away from having uh, reunions and stuff. But, and uh, about enjoying uh, being at uh, the school, um, well, we knew no other thing. You know, that was it. So you either liked school or you didn't. I liked it because I had some nice friends. And uh, I wasn't the smartest person down there, but I mean, I was on, you know, had honors and stuff, so I liked it. Our meeting last week, I still had uh, 
two guys there that I played baseball with when we were at the meeting, Dave Moore and uh, Burnfield. That's right. And Snug, well, Snodgrass was there too. He mm -hmm. normally don't come, and he was there. Mm -hmm. I was over in Korea with him. But uh, it's it's nice. That part of it's nice. Mm -hmm. and we still get together, and we're going to get together. But they voted, they sort of voted down. See that today or this year would be 65 years since we graduated, and, and nobody's in favor of not that getting much. together with a reunion this time. We did 60 though. Yeah. Now that's kind of the difference. And uh, what kids, though, today I don't see them wanting to do this kind of thing. Do they or not so much, especially with how we have Facebook and we're all yes. you all stay connected over the phone. Mm -hmm. There's never like a disconnection, I guess, between us. Even when you're away, there you're so always you right there with that. everyone. Yeah. See, TV wasn't that big when we graduated in 50. Mm -hmm. I mean, the TV was about this small, and you got like four channels or something. Uh, so we didn't have TV. We really didn't have big TV. We certainly didn't have computers, and we didn't have cell phones. Like Marianne said when I was over overseas, I got four days from Korea to go to Japan to rest, and I called her from over there, and, we talked, I think, maybe like for five minutes. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah. It was like on a paper, and you were on like a paper mm -hmm. or something. That's a long way. But it's, uh, it's, it's different, different now, you know. You can, I like the cell phone, because I, I got mine right in my pocket. And, and all the family has cell phones, so it makes it convenient sometimes. Now it's different now, but do you like being at Washai? I love being at Washai. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely prefer it to any other school. Now what do you like about it? I like, I like the way everyone is because, I don't know, I saw it the most at our prom recently. It was because I went to our prom at Wash High and then the boy I took to our school, I went to his and he goes to McGuffey. And everyone at our prom, they were so, everyone was so down to earth, everyone just wanted to have fun, there was no crazy expensive dresses, right. there was no, there was no hoity-toity, like, arrogant attitudes, everyone was so Friendly. nice, mm -hmm. everyone just was there to, like, tell everyone they look nice and have a great time, and then when you, when you go to another school, you see how there's, like, a competition between the girls to look better, and <laughs> it's, like, there was like arrogant attitudes and it just wasn't the friendly atmosphere. I just like the way Wash High kids are. They're very down to earth, very appreciative of everything. I think I don't think there's too much bullying that goes on, is there? No, and I think it's one of the nicest schools too. Everyone is so nice there. It's so See, nice. There was no bullying when we went. Mm -hmm. Like I see on T V now. Yeah. A lot of kids uh, or reading the paper where they bully someone and um they had a class down there at that time that uh, for kids that just couldn't make it too much in um, with uh, regular uh, lessons that they had. So they had a class and it would teach more like wood shop mm -hmm. and uh, um, what else they teach? Any mean, mechanical things, uh, all, machine, all machine shop, yeah, machine stuff shop and like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's good. And I think they st yeah. should still have that because not everybody's meant to go to college. Yeah, and those are very practical skills. We need people like we need to people. do those jobs. We're going to need plumbers and electricians and things like that. But uh, see, when I came out of high, high school, I went to work at Acme Supermarket there on Bow Street. And uh, I ran the night shift, just stocking, restocking shelves and stuff, and uh, unloading tractor trailers at night. And I worked at the Hazel uh, Number Two in the shipping gang. I worked at Washington Glass. See, we we had a Hazel Number One, Number Two, Hazel Glass Atlas, companies. Washington Glass, Jessup Steel, Washington Steel. A lot of places lot that of the kids would go to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. now they're not there. Those places are gone. They're gone, or, or very involved, very little. Because a lot of the boys couldn't go to college. Mm -hmm. 
boys or girls couldn't go to college. And um, so they went to work in those mills and, and in the glass company. But now they're not there. The only jobs kids can get if, if they don't go to college are um, service jobs in the restaurants and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's different. Yeah, times are different. Everybody was patriotic. We, see, we were like nine years old when the Second World War was on. And patriotism was wonderful. They had uh, people at that time, you couldn't get sugar, you couldn't get coffee much. You had books. You were allowed to get like so many pounds of uh, coffee a month. And you had to have a, a book for that. But people didn't care. They were, everybody was patriotic and willing to do that. Now we like leadership, good leadership. Now you look on TV and you see people protesting and stamping on our, stepping on our flag and stuff like that. Yeah. Gosh, that would never have happened then. So times just, times have changed. Well, thank you so much for having mm -hmm. me in your home and letting me ask you all about your life. <laughs> That's fine. I don't know if we answered.